Newton Crouch Incorporated presents technical tips. How to perform initial programming for the T-Jet ARC 6000 console granular applications. Important warnings. Do not try to modify or lengthen any of the three speed sensor or encoder cables. And always disconnect the battery from your console prior to jump starting, welding, or charging your battery. Your console calibration is a one-time procedure. Turning the power on or off does not affect the console's memory. All your data is retained, and the console must be calibrated and programmed before it is ready to be used. The console has several parts. The display data, there is an on and off button, a mode selector switch for operating or setup, an increase or decrease switch, which changes your values in the display. The display selector function knob used for operating or setup, the boom switch on and off indicator. The logo in the lower left hand corner may vary due to the console's age, but it makes no difference in your console performance. NCI has made a worksheet to help you program your console. It has items A through L. The most commonly used choices are marked with a star and in some cases are filled in the chart for you. You need to accumulate this information before you start to program your console. You may download this worksheet from the Newton Crouch website by going to Support Precision Technical Tips. Now go to Controller. What does it do? Go to the section on TJET ARC 6000 and go to the link. Click here. Now that you have your information together, Turn the ARC console on by moving the switch up. Choose Setup by moving the switch down. Twist the display selector to the word Prime. Now using the switch, increase or decrease, you will be able to make your selections. Don't worry if the selection doesn't change immediately. Sometimes you may have to hold it for 10 or more seconds to get the next choice. First, you have to choose the type of application program, and there are five choices, three liquid and two dry. Single conveyor dry spreader is the most commonly used dry application. Your other choice is the dual conveyor dry spreader, also known as a split chain. When you're choosing your application type, it is very important that you look closely at the screen. They look very similar. L standard and C standard are very similar. Look for the C. Step B, twist the display selector to distance. In using your switch, increase and decrease. Choose the calibration number that shows your type of radar. Midtech Compact Radar starts at 780. Dickie John Radar starts at 1000. A minimum of 400 feet should be driven to calibrate your correct number. Step C. Choose Implement Width. The number 1 should light in red. This is your dry swath. Numbers 2 through 9 will have a zero value. Using the Increase and Decrease switch, you will enter your swath in inches. 50 feet, 600 inches. 60 feet, 720 inches. Now don't be confused because when you're in the operate mode, your implement width or swath will be shown in feet. While you are in implement width, flip the switch from setup to operate. Now look at the screen. It should say close. Using the increase decrease switch, you can toggle back and forth and you should see close or hold. You want close to appear on that screen when you are doing a granular application. Now. Flip the switch back to Setup and go to the next step. Step D. Twist the display selector to Total Applied. The spreader constant number must be checked. The gate height must match the constant chosen. Using a conveyor width and type plus an encoder, NCI has a chart to help you obtain this number. Step E. Application Rate. This is your product density and is entered in pounds per cubic foot. The product density should be measured and entered with each load. NCI sells a density scale that will give you the correct number for your load. 
An incorrect product density will cause your application to be incorrect. We also have a video that shows you how to use the density scale correctly. Step F, percentage rate. This is the amount of deviation that you will allow in your application rate. The setting shown here shows a setting of 110%, meaning you would be able to spread 10% over your desired rate. Always return to 100% in the operate mode or your entire job will be incorrect. Step G, product volume. This is the amount of product in your hopper and it is entered as a constant in pounds. The Newton Crouch 10-foot body holds approximately 12,000 pounds. A 12-foot body holds approximately 14,000 pounds. Step H, total area. This number is a cumulative total of all the jobs you have spread since the last time you cleared your console. It will show ERR in the setup mode. Step I, field area. This is a discretionary number. People with a small field may choose a half acre, a large field may choose five acres. One acre is your usual standard. Item J, speed. This is your ground speed override. Set it to zero. Item K, scan. The display will show ERR. This is a cycle through some of the major functions. Item L, test speed. This is commonly used for testing only. However, it can be used for stationary unloading of your hopper. This information is on a sheet we called our cheat sheet. All the items that are highlighted must be performed at the beginning of each job, but it follows the programming we have just done. Now you're ready to head to the field and spread. Technical assistance is available online 24-7 on our YouTube channel, or our website, newtoncrouch.com. You can call us at 800-241-1350, Monday to Friday, and speak with a real person. No recorded messages. Our knowledgeable staff will be glad to assist you. Proudly, Made in America, a family-owned business since 1940, Newton Crouch.